Lee here. Oh, there she is. Hi. Hi, one second. Yep, I am here, and I know Sonal just contacted us that she's going to recuse herself from this hearing, this um, applicant. Yes. Okay, I'm going to give it a minute for the waiting room to clear. Just a reminder to, when you enter to mute. Good afternoon. This is a hearing before the Boston Canvas Board, the BCB. Today is August 14th, 2024. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to a temporary amendments to the open meeting law. This is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. Before I review some procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Luke. Luke, good afternoon. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Cannabis Board. Today, I'm joined by Commissioner Lisa Holmes, Commissioner John Smith, Commissioner Gabriel Camacho, Commissioner Ramon Soto, and Commissioner Sonal Gandhi is here, but she is recusing herself from the vote on um, the first application before us today. Okay, thank you. My name is Luke Santhaus, and I am the Boston Cannabis Licensing Specialist for the Boston Cannabis Board. I will, be bit, I will begin by calling each item in order as they appear on the agenda. We have one item on our transactional agenda today, for, and that is for a new license. The applicant will have 10 minutes to present to the BCB, followed by any questions from the board members. We will then take public testimony beginning with elected officials or the representatives, followed by the general public. If you wish to testify, please sign up via the link that will be put in the chat. If you, have, if you haven't done so already. Additionally, you may also use the chat function to request to testify. Please wait until the matter in which you would like to speak is called. Do not use the chat to give testimony. It will not be considered. Please state your full name, address, any affiliation, and testimony will be limited to two minutes at which you will be muted. Additional testimony may be submitted in writing to the Canvas Board at boston.gov. There will be, the record will be kept open until Tuesday, August 20th, at 5 p.m. The BCB does not give any more weight to spoken testimony as it does to written testimony. Okay, first up, we are calling the applicant. Name is Sony.LLC, doing business as Sony. The proposed license premise is 1576 Tremont Street in Mission Hill. The license type is a recreational retail cannabis license. The proposed hours are Monday to Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. This is a non-equity applicant. Date of initial application was December 29, 2023, and a community meeting was held on March 21st, 2024. There is a buffer zone conflict with another cannabis establishment. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Yeah, for the record, Larry DeCaro, 175 Federal Street, Boston. Okay, thank you. Again, you will have 10 minutes to present and you may share your screen and begin. Well, thank you, uh, Chair Joyce, members uh, of the commission. Uh, the people of Boston voted in favor of both cannabis referendum questions. Mission Hill was no different than most of the rest of the city, signifying an interest in the legalization. Yet a few years later, there is no cannabis facility to which a resident of Mission Hill can walk. Two have been proposed. Neither of their doors are open for business. The one at 1441 Tremont Street was approved by this board, but did not secure the approval from the Board of Appeal. All we know is it's not in operation today. Then there is an additional one at 123 Terrace Street, not far from 1441, but outside of the buffer zone. Uh, this one was granted a provisional license in 2019, yet has still not opened its doors. In short, a resident of Mission Hill must go to Hyde Square in Jamaica Plain or to Brookline Village if they want to purchase cannabis, as must any other Boston resident who works in the area, of which there may be more than the 24,000 who live on Mission Hill. The need for this dispensary on a main street, on a bus route, nearby the trolley, within walking distance of 
tens of thousands of people is clear. The applicant, Aditya Soni, will now explain the community process in which he has engaged over many months, which has resulted in hundreds of residents registering their support and many individual businesses and residents writing personal letters. Aditya? Hi everyone, how are you doing tonight? Uh, give me one second. All right. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Boston Cannabis Board. My name is Aditya Sony, and I'm the managing partner and CEO. Sony LLC is proposing a non-equity adult use cannabis establishment to be located at 1576 Tremont Street in Boston. We're here today to ask for your approval for our project. I just want to start off by introducing myself and our wonderful team. I'm a graduate of UMass Boston. I major in criminal justice with a minor in economics, which led me to decide to run such a highly regulated business. Our team also includes Aditi Sony, our chief financial officer. She has an MBA from MIT and has extensive experience working in nonprofit organizations. She also happens to be my mother, who brings focus, alignment, careful planning, and high standards to all of her work. We have a contract with Citronic Security Integrators, who have worked with numerous cannabis dispensaries for their security planning and implementation. Mark Scanlon from Citronics is on this call as well and can take security related questions at the end of the presentation. Finally, we have our legal team, Larry Dakar and Quinn Heath, both pay close attention to detail and will ensure our project meets every requirement of the BCB and the CCC once we open. The two will work closely with other cannabis retailers to find the very best fit for every neighborhood they've worked in. My parents, Aditya and Rakesh Soni and I each hold a one third share in this business with 100% operational control under my name. Although Rakesh and Aditi are shareholders and investors in this project, I will make the final decisions regarding the business and its operation. Larry spoke about our distance to other cannabis facilities, but I wanna reiterate that as the board is aware, the city of Boston requests that 52 dispensaries be approved, making the half mile buffer impossible to adhere to in every situation. Mission Hill is a densely populated neighborhood with over 24,000 residents in a one mile radius of our facility. Aside from this, thousands of commuters, hospital workers, and students come through this busy stretch of Mission Hill daily, yet the closest dispensary is 0.8 miles away in Brookline. Having another dispensary at this end of Tremont Street towards the commercial hub of Mission Hill would help stimulate the business towards Brigham Circle. We have also conducted a survey to ensure that we are not near any school and the closest one Mission Grammar School sits well outside the buffer at 687 feet from our facility. Here you can see the floor plans for the facility. I wanna highlight that our architect has carefully designed these layouts to reflect the best use of the space according to CCC regulation. The basement is included here because we're gonna be completely overhauling that space, but it's gonna have limited use as part of the store. No cannabis products can or will be stored there. I've also included a preliminary drawing of the store's frontage in the top right-hand corner. This, of course, will change a bit over time as we receive feedback from the city of Boston, the CCC, and the neighbors themselves. I want to take this opportunity to highlight the new generation of leadership that begins with me. My father has been dedicated to Mission Hill for over 19 years and is now happily retired. And that's what any son can hope for their parent. I will be the new owner at 1576 Tremont, and I'm committed to ensuring a positive change, a friendlier, more reliable retail experience for the Mission Hill community. This is also a brand new business for our neighborhood, which has been underserved for far too long. Residents living in a walkable city like this should be able to do all of their shopping in their neighborhood and support their community members in doing so. We also have a new vision for Sony Dot. We want this to be a completely revitalized retail space with a clean and modern design. Sony Dot will have an entirely remodeled interior and exterior, including important sidewalk improvements with an attractive design that complements the neighborhood. I've published my cell phone number and you have it here too and I've been responding to anyone who's called or emailed me, and I'll continue to do that once we open. Just like many Mission Hill advocates, I firmly believe that our community should be able to support the needs of its residents. Mission Hill has waited far too long for the same services, the same stores, and the same independence that so many other neighborhoods in Boston have. With the opening of Sony Dot, we'll come closer to the vision that we all share, that Mission Hill should grow to be a place where residents can do everything that they need right here in this neighborhood. Sony Dot, just like all the other 500 cannabis stores approved in the state, will have local customers that come from our neighborhood. 
We will serve our local residents and very few, if any customers, will travel far to get here. We also have an abundance of public transportation options throughout Mission Hill. Although there's ample street parking on site, we will, encourage to, we will continue to encourage the use of alternative transportation, like the bus on Huntington opposite Fenway Road or the green and orange lines. Additionally, bus routes 66 and 39 are a short walk away and we'll address tra traffic and congestion by ensuring that no one is occupying a space that they shouldn't be. Our staff will be regularly engaging with customers as they come into the store and anyone who attempts to double park, block throughways or occupy delivery spots will be asked to move or we will refuse to serve them. We have a contract with Citronics that will ensure that not only our regulations are being met, but that we can conduct business in the same and efficient manner. Products will be strictly monitored and controlled, and we will have a zero tolerance policy to ensure customers are not using products on or around the premises. This will be strictly enforced through periodic scans by staff, and anyone violating these regulations will be permanently banned from our facility. Sony Dot will also utilize ID science technology for secure ID confirmation. This is the same technology used by Massport at Logan Airport for domestic and international travels. Employees will also have sole discretion to refuse access. So if there's any violations of these regulations or disrespectful behavior in our community, we'll exercise our right to remove and ban individuals from the facility. Our trained staff and security team will ensure that there are no lines outside of the facility. It's also important to emphasize, emphasize that transaction times for cannabis customers are very quick. On average, a customer spends only about three to five minutes inside the store browse the menu on self-serve iPad. If they'd like a personalized sales experience, they can discuss their needs with the staff member at the counter. Many customers are also now choosing to order online as well, which will decrease transaction times. I'd like to address another point that's been brought to my attention while I've been speaking with our community during the past several months. This concerns the possibility for litter, loitering, and general nuisances. We recognize that this is a concern surrounding cannabis businesses, and our trained staff will ensure that customers re remain respectful of the neighborhood. Keeping this in mind, I just want to reiterate our zero tolerance policy, which we believe sets the standard in Massachusetts for preventing and deterring these types of situations. We plan to positively impact the community in a real and meaningful way, with up to $25,000 per year for three years in community benefits. We propose that a local, local community foundation be formed to determine the best use of these funds so they go to those who need it most. I'd also like to pause here and say that we're committed to hiring local Mission Hill residents first under the Our Mission Hill initiative. I'll speak some more about our diversity and inclusion goals on the next slide, but we'll be seeking local residents to apply for Sony Dot jobs and encouraging people of color, veterans, and persons with disabilities to work with us. I'm fully committed to this effort and excited to make this part of the culture at Sony Dot. Aside okay. from direct Sorry, funding, just a heads up, you have 30 seconds. Aside from direct funding, we also want to recognize that we uh, we help our community through well-paid job opportunities. We anticipate hiring 15 to 20 people with a mix of full-time and part-time employment. Uh, our goals for diversity and inclusion, inclusion are listed on the screen. We've also worked hard this past year to ensure that Mission Hill is heard about and supports our efforts, and we'll continue that work for the rest of the year. I've spent countless hours going to the community and chatting with people, and we've collected 543 signatures of support from the Mission Hill community. 37 coming from direct abutters, 38 from Mission Hill businesses, and 468 from community members. Leading up to this hearing, 17 community members wrote personal letters of support, and over 25, email, 25 people have emailed the board in support of this project in the past week. Sony Dot has the neighborhood support, and I thank everyone for it. We've also handed out 35, almost 3,500 flyers in Mission Hill and advertise the information about this in the Mission Hill Gazette. This is just a map showcasing where our support's coming from. As you can see, we have a zoomed in version showing the three to four blocks around our store. And, you know, the support runs deep throughout our neighborhood. This is just uh, showing what we posted in the Mission Hill Gazette, informing the neighborhood about our efforts. And here's a before and after of the proposed facility. And here's a more detailed first floor plan. You can see our vault here, as well as our ID check in the front. We will keep a staff member out there at all times to ensure that no one's double parked or causing any traffic issues for the neighborhood. Okay, the 10 minutes is up if you wanna just wrap it up. Real quick, yeah, that would be great. Thank you for letting me present today. You know, this project means a lot to me. 
I grew up in this community. My parents have worked here for over 20 years, and I'm excited to, you know, add my face and my business to this community. Thank you. I'll take your questions now. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. We will now move on to questions from the board, starting with Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Luke. Um, maybe we could just stop the screen sharing for a minute. Sure. Um, I do want to ask a question. I don't know who the right person is to answer it regarding the buffer zone conflict. Um, the slide you presented, I would say, is a, a little misleading. The buffer zone conflict applies to active HCAs, not open and operating um, cannabis establishments. So in the eyes of the board, those two cannabis establishments that have been previously awarded HCAs from this board um, are considered active. One of them did get denied at CBA, as you described, but we are aware that they are actively considering um, appealing that. So um, I have to dismiss your statement as far as the closest one is, is NIDA. Um, there are two buffer zone conflicts here with other places that have an HCA. Um, so could you please address that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just to clarify, we do have a buffer zone violation with 1441 Tremont Street, but we did our distance measurement to 123 Terrace Street, and we included that on the map because we actually do not have a buffer zone violation with them. Uh, aside from that, as I said, Mission Hill is one of the most dense neighborhoods in Boston with over 24,000 residents in a one mile radius of our facility. And this, along with the commuters, we believe that our neighborhood would require more than one dispensary to fully serve our residents. Which one are you referring to? Is the buffer zone conflict? The 1441 Tremont Street. Green, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Okay. Green. And then the, there's one, okay, so the, you're correct there. So there's one just outside the buffer. Yeah. So I, I think that might've been a little unclear, but the one at 123 Terrace Street, that one's actually outside of our buffer zone. Okay. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about this location. Um, we are, we take into consideration things like where product gets delivered and picked up. Where does the product get delivered and picked up here? I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, explained uh, in your presentation. If you don't mind, could I put up a, uh, a visual of the first floor layout? That might help. Sure. A bit. Yeah. All right, so uh, we were planning to have our deliveries come through. There's a side alley on the right side of our facility. Uh, that alley, we are planning to put a secure entrance there and then deliveries will come through the side door. That's so that's my question. The side alley, I can't figure out from the map who owns that, mm -hmm. who has access to it. Yeah, so we, uh, so my father, he owns that alley. It's part of his property and it is shared with the subway next door. Currently, they use it for trash and putting their bins there. We would uh, reconstruct the alley in a way where Subway would be able to have access to their trash, but not have access to our store. Okay. And so is it the same landlord that owned, your father that yep. owns Subway? He owns that building as well, yeah. I need to see a picture of the outside, not so much the layout inside. Sure, uh, I think maybe, uh, yeah, it's a little hard to see right here in this first one, but you can see that gate that's in between the two properties. So you're so saying a truck can fit down there? What was that? A truck can fit down there? Oh, no, the, the truck wouldn't go down the alley. That's that's a pedestrian alley. Okay. So you'd park in front. Um, so on the street there, I'm looking at the street signs. Um, There's two-hour meter parking out front. Or not metered, I'm sorry. The two hour parking is out front and across the street we have metered parking. So explain to me again, your deliveries would be, yeah, they would so park in front? Park in front and then right at that gate, we're planning to put a, uh, a camera system so they can communicate with the people in the vault at the time. And then they would verify that the delivery is coming in and then they would unlock that gate allowing them into the vault or into the side door, which will take them to the vault. So you're stating on the record that your father owns the building where Subway is? Yeah, he owns that property. Okay. Right. 
Sorry, could I just add to it? Um, this is Aditi Soni, CFO of Dentity. Um, Rakesh Soni, my husband, he owns only the ground floor subway of um, that building, not the whole building. Just want to make that correction. Okay, because that was not clear. Yeah, got it. Apologies Thank you. Okay, I may have other questions. I will um, let the other commissioners ask their questions as I continue to process the presentation. Okay, uh, Commissioner Holmes, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, the only school you mentioned is Mission, but there's also the Tobin Elementary School on Smith Street, as well as the Tobin Community Center, which is diagonally across the street from you. So how many feet, you haven't measured how many feet you are from either of those um, establishments? Uh, yeah, so I, maybe I was a bit unclear. I'm sorry. Let me just go back to the map real quick. So, um, yeah, so 1576 Tremont street is over here. Our closest school to our facility was the mission grammar school. I believe the Tobin community center is, uh, a bit toward it's, it's towards 1441, their facility. So they are about 0.3 miles away, their facility and the Tobin community center even further. We measured from the closest school just to ensure that there were no buffer zone violations. And the closest school, which is the Mission Grammar School, is about 687 feet from us. But the community center is diagonally across from you, across the street. You're 1571, and the community center is 14 something. So that's only a block, right? No, that's actually a couple blocks. So it's, uh, I'm sorry, can you see my cursor on the screen? Is I can. That... I can. Yeah. So, it's, it's somewhere towards here. That's where the Tobin Community Center is. Right, it but is, now that's a shorter line from you. Right, that's so line. With that, so uh, the way we measured, I don't know if this was correct or not, but we did our closest school because the Tobin Community Center is almost twice the distance. You know, they're clearly outside of our, our buffer zone. We're not within 500 feet I, of. I, I don't know. I disagree. I don't know if I'm right. I disagree. I think that needs to be measured as well as the elementary school on Smith Street. Okay. I mean, if I'm wrong, the chairwoman can correct me, but that, I think those would be included as well. I just asked um, Danny to confirm that as well, where the measurements supposed to be taken from. And um, actually, that that was really my concern. I, I read over your security um, plans, and they were were very good. Um, the only thing I, I noticed, and you mentioned international um, licenses and IDs, and as we all know, Mission Hill is a really big college area. Of course. So, um, what are you going? What other avenues are you going to use to mitigate some of those false IDs and things that we see sometimes in college right. communities? So as I said before, we will be utilizing the ID science scanners, the same ones at Massport. Uh, in terms of international IDs, so we will be able to accept U.S. passports and U.S. driver's license and things like that. But in terms of international passports and international IDs, we won't actually be able to accept them because not all of them can be verified and we don't want to take our chances there. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. My concern was those two, the, the two Tobin things. So once we get a better grip on that, we'll be all right. right. Thank you very much. Of course. Commissioner Lisa, if I may um, um, just jump in to clarify. So the, um, the nearest for the mapping is taken from Mission Grammar, as Aditya pointed out, and that is 687 feet. And I believe Tobin, we can make those measurements and get back to the board. They are more than 1,000 feet, but um, we will get back to you. I don't want to speak um, a cent, you know, particular distance without measuring it. But oh, no, no, I, no I, I don't want you to make a guess. No, I want you to they have are it. Further yeah. away. Yeah. They are further away. Yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. That's okay. it, um, Luke. Thank okay. You. Uh, next up, we have Commissioner Camacho. Yes, um, you said you're going to hire 15 to 20 employees, um, both full-time and part-time, correct? Yes. About how many full-time employees? Full-time? Uh, I mean, to be honest, it really depends on the needs of our staff. You know, we, we believe that we have to support our neighborhood and Mission Hill 
if some uh, employees require full-time employment, but they started less as part-time, we will, of course, look into that. But for now, we don't have any any goals on full-time versus part-time. It's more what the employees need, you know. Okay. What um, will be your starting wage? We're starting at $20 an hour. Um, you said that um, you're going to start a foundation to uh, disperse the 25,000 uh, in community funds. What, who's gonna comprise of this foundation? Who's gonna be part of it? How are you going about soliciting neighbors and community organizations to be part of that foundation? Right. We would actually, so we'd reach out to community members. Uh, this goes as well as the community groups and any members who are interested in joining the, the board of this foundation so they can determine where these funds go. We would, uh, not an election, but we would basically just take people's applications in and whoever we feel, you know, fits best and represents the community and their interest, we would elect them to head this. Thank you. That's all for now. Okay, uh, Commissioner Soto, do you have any questions? Hi, uh, just in your, um, in the effort to recruit those workers, uh, you know, you specifically uh, cited um, listing in the Mission Hill Gazette. It would, would that be the only place you would uh, be posting? I, I just wanted to get a better sense of how would you be posting and looking for uh, workers? Right. So uh, as, I, as I had said, so the Mission Hill Gazette, that was actually our posting of our flyer that we had to post a couple months ago. That wasn't actually for the jobs themselves. But in terms of hiring, you know, Mission Hill is a very, very diverse neighborhood. And as I said, we, we focus on hiring the Mission Hill residents first. And if we believe that we can't fit our diversity and inclusion goals through this, we are willing to work with programs of the city. And uh, Aditi could probably speak a bit more about that as she's heading up our DNI. Absolutely. Um, thank you for the question, uh, Commissioner Soto. So we plan to um, utilize few avenues. Um, as Aditya said, Mission Hill Gazette is um, widely uh, distributed in there. And we are committed to hire more than 85% of the workforce from Boston. We will also reach out to local job fairs, um, utilize masshire.gov services, as well as uh, mayor's service office of returning citizens. So uh, with these and with the diversity of Mission Hill uh, population itself, we feel like we have the opportunity to meet our diversity goal as Aditya stated is in presentation, which is um, at least 50% women, 70% um, minorities having representation from LGBTQ veterans and Kori background. So that's very helpful because I hadn't, when I, I, that was going to be my next question. I'm not sure that I saw that breakdown within the memo presentation of the actual goal numbers. And, it, and please, uh, Luke or anybody else, correct me if I, if I just missed that. But that, that was something that I, um, was going to ask it, you know, and if it's not in there, I would hope that you would be able to sort of add that as an addendum. But, um, and if it is in there, just then point it out to me so that for, for the next hearing, I'll be able to weigh that in my um, decision making process. Uh, absolutely, it's part of slide deck, but let us double check and get back to you on that. Okay, and uh, Commissioner Smith, do you have any questions? Thank you, Luke. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking very much along the line of Commissioner Soto, but going back to the question that Commissioner Camacho asked, uh, uh, detail? Yeah. So you're saying that you have no goals for full-time or part-time employees? Like, there's no sense of how that's going to break down? Well, so, of course, we expect that we're going to have more part-time employees than full-time as mm. these businesses are. But we also don't want to have set goals because if some employees start with us part-time, we don't want them to be like, oh, you can only work part-time. You know, Some people, they require more hours or less hours. So we want to be able to be flexible with our team. In terms of full and part-time, I mean, all the, the bud tenders and the 
the people like that, they would generally be part-time and then full-time employees would be management as well as a few people who would work as bud tenders as well, just because, you know, as I said, we don't know who needs what. So in terms of your wages, you said minimum is $20 an hour. So everybody's getting that full and part-time. Yeah. At and least. are you giving, are you, what, at least? Are at the least. Also like, offering. Some management workers may get more than 20 more than 20. Are you also offering all the other benefits to part-time workers, the sick leave and the healthcare options and the paid time off? Yeah. They're getting that as well? Dependent on their hours. It will be? It'll be dependent Can on their say hours. say that louder? Yeah. Dependent on their hours. It'll, it'll be dependent on their, their working hours. Mm. Okay. So it's not like it's guaranteed they're starting off part-time, but they're getting these benefits. Okay. Right. I, I mean, um, so we, we don't want it that they, they start abusing the benefits right at the beginning of, of of working and then stop working with us, you know? So we want it to be in unison with, with their work. Okay. So you're not guaranteeing part-time workers the benefits is what I'm hearing. No, we, we are, but we, for example, like if someone starts with us part-time in the first week, we probably wouldn't give them Six Understood. Months, you know yeah, I mean? makes like total that. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Could I, if, to um, Aditya's point, as I'm putting together employment plan here, um, John, um, Commissioner John Smith, uh, we are hoping to provide with sick leave, um, health benefits, and paid time off. And um, as Aditya mentioned, depending on number of hours, so you know, twenty and more will qualify for that. We definitely want to have full-time employees, but we could also imagine in that neighborhood, people may have second jobs, so we want to accommodate that. We also believe full-time employees are more invested in the, um, in the organization, so we would prefer to have full-time if we can. We don't want to have a lot of part-time employees, but it depends like, you know, um, how the response is from the local um, people who are seeking employment, but we definitely want to give them benefits um, as applicable for full-time employees or more than 20 hours of working. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, literally. and I'm just a little surprised that you don't, you don't have a sense of, since you want full-time employees, how many do you actually need or want in that sense? You, you didn't articulate any goals around that. See, um, I, I strongly believe full-time employees are more invested in the company um, as compared to part-time if they are coming five or 10 hours, right? So it's win-win for both sides. We also want people who are part of Sony Dot. They really feel like, you know, they belong to this place. So we will definitely prefer that. At this point, we don't have defined goal that it has to be 50-50 or 70-20. We will try to maximize our full-time employees but we will accommodate part-time also if, you know, we are not getting folks who can work there full-time and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the, the, uh, the answer. You said that community, community benefits distribution will begin upon positive cash flow, which you're projecting six to 12 months, and it's lasting up to three years, which means that you're only going to offer the community benefits for three years. That's it. That is, you, I'm sorry. Um, we are saying at least for now we are committing to three years. It does not mean after three years we will not care about the community, but this is our commitment at this point that up to three years we will, um, you know, put 25,000 towards community benefit in Mission Health. Work, working with this community foundation that you're going to form, that you're going to so uh, we have preliminary conversation with um, our attorney, um, attorney um, Larry, about it. And, uh, you know, we have not put the paperwork in place. And as, you know, we progress through this, we will put the paperwork in place. We will hire all the uh, nominees or uh, advisors where these funds should be put from the local mission in community. And they will recommend us, um, you know, where this money should go towards and they will help make the decision. We are not committing to one specific or particular fund here okay so you're gonna oh, thank you for that so you're gonna encourage online ordering and wait times and all that because there's no there's not a lot of parking right but you don't perceive any issues with any of that nope not a lot of parking aditya you're on mute can you speak to that sorry i didn't even realize i was on mute but um yeah in terms of parking we have 
a good amount of parking in front of our street. You know, this is a very large commercial zone of Mission Hill. There's plenty of two hour metered parking as well as two hour parking right in front of our facility. But our goal is really to serve local customers. You know, we don't plan to advertise billboards on the highway or any of that. And we really aren't, we're not aiming at trying to get people from Brookline and other neighborhoods in Boston to come and visit our facility. We want to serve the local Mission Hill neighborhood. So we will be uh, encouraging online orders because honestly, most people I've seen that do use cannabis facilities, they they order online just to make it easier for them, you know. But even without it, we think transaction times will be about three to five minutes. And should any problems arise in terms of double parking or if there's a fire hydrant right off front, if someone parks there and wants to come in and buy something, we just won't allow that, you know. Thank you, sir. Um, last question. How have you really addressed the issue that's come up that most of, because there are many students we know in that area, and most of the support, you know, maybe from folks who are just there transitionally and not staying, um, how did you address that? That they're not permanent residents there. Right. Although some of our support may have come from students, a good amount of support has also come from local businesses and residents who've lived there for a very long time. I think it's important to not dismiss the student population. You know, Mission Hill is surrounded by some of the best colleges in the world. Students come in and out of here every year. And their voice, although it's for a short period of time, they're usually replaced by other students. So I believe their voice is valid. Yeah, not invalidating. I just, I, I appreciate your answer. I think Commissioner Choice has follow up questions. Thank you. Thank you. I do. I, you know, it, it makes me pause that the community benefits don't seem to be very well thought out. Maybe they are, but it hasn't, I haven't been persuaded that they are. And it also makes me pause that the employment plan seems to be. You know, waiting to see if we make a lot of money and if we can hire more people. Um, a lot of the support, I'm guessing, if you own the subway or you own that that unit, whether you're employees. But my question to you is, why do you want to get into cannabis? Yeah, uh, as I said before, I uh, I majored in criminology with a minor in economics from UMass Boston, and in doing so, you know, I've realized that. The future of Mission Hill, at least for this property, is a highly regulated business. My father has run a store in Mission Hill for about 19 years now, and I've watched him do it growing up. And I realized that I don't think that me, myself, I could handle such an unregulated business. You know, I want something that's that's properly run. You know what I mean? And I believe this project will give our community not only the service it deserves, but it will help renovate this property and, and bring it up to the standard, which, uh, which I hold. Okay. Um, that's, that's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions from members of the board? All right. With that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. sorry there's, no, there's just one that popped in my head. Was there any, um, or what, what was the thought process around the hours of operation? Yeah, so the thought process, we spoke to Mission Grammar School and they had a, uh, they had a concern about um, pickup drop-off times. So we decided to open uh, after school drop-off just so there's no overlap with that. And then the way it changes, how on Saturday we have different hours and Sunday different hours, it's just you know due to how we see traffic going in Mission Hill. Of course, on Sunday nights, we don't expect many customers, so we won't open as late. But during the week, we would be open later, not only for us, but to help stimulate the businesses around us. You know, a lot of the businesses that I've spoken to, they support us and they support us because they they hope that our business will bring them more customers, will bring in more foot traffic. And that's why we want to stay open to that time. Great. Thank you. All right. Any additional questions? Okay, with that, we will move on to public testimony, beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. As you heard from uh, the applicant, uh, ONS hosted a community meeting on March 21st. 
uh, was very well attended, roughly 70 community members in attendance um, with a number in support and a number in opposition. Uh, those in support cited the family's uh, longstanding presence uh, in the community, as well as an option for job creation. Uh, those in opposition uh, stated that they were in opposition uh, due to the proximity to the Mission Hill Grammar School, uh, which would be heard is, is potentially outside of the 500 foot barrier, but there's still concerns remaining that it's still close uh, to where children frequent. Um, also concerns were raised, um, members of the community assert that the, the family owns a number of other properties in the neighborhood that are in poor conditions and reportedly have a number of code violations uh, and they feel they would not be good operators. Uh, we received opposition letters from uh, the Community Alliance of Mission Hill, as well as the Mission Hill Neighborhood Housing Services. Um, with that information, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tony, I see you have your... Uh... Yes, thank you. All right. Um, hi, um, uh, members of the board. My name is Tony. I'm the uh, Mission Hill liaison for City Councilor Sharon Durkin. Um, I'll be reading a letter into the record. Um, Madam Chair and members of the board, as District Counselor for Mission Hill, I am writing a letter of opposition to the proposal at 1576 Tremont Street. While I believe that businesses should be allowed to operate provided that they meet the rules and regulations in regards to opening a business, the Mission Hill neighborhood has raised concerns to be aware of when considering this application, namely compliance with city health codes and proximity to a school. In my year on the city council, I've been an active part uh, active supporter of all types of businesses, including cannabis. And while I commend the proponent for participating in a thorough process in which they engage with Mission Hill neighbors, I am in opposition to their proposal today. Despite the proponent's efforts to build public trust throughout the process, the situation on the ground at 1576 Tremont unfortunately tells a different story. There are currently 130 city code violations associated with the property, including 10 issued in June alone. Many neighbors have cited that the previous business, which is being proposed by the same family, was a blight on the main business street of Mission Hill for over 20 years. I hope to get to a place where I could support or be at least not opposed to this proposal, but the way the proponent has not taken responsibility for the property's current violations means I cannot be assured if problems arise that they will be dealt with in a way that befits the neighborhood. Moreover, although the property falls outside the school buffer zone, the proximity of this site to the nearby Mission Grammar School, which serves students three months through sixth grade, is concerning to residents who again uplift concerns about a business owned by an operator with a history of neglect around basic quality of life standards. A responsibly owned and operated retail use in this location would be a huge benefit to the neighborhood, and I look forward to supporting a future proposal that respects the quality of life needs of the neighborhood. Unfortunately, I do not have trust that the operator can meet these standards. Echoing the opposition of neighborhood groups and constituents, I would like to go on record opposing this application. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any other elected officials or their representatives that would like to testify? All right, seeing that, um, we will move on to public testimony. And a reminder, you have two minutes to provide your testimony. Um, first, we have Julian Gordon. Uh, okay. Um, next, we have Mike Spani. Okay, moving on to Eric Alden. Good afternoon, can you hear me okay? Yep. Perfect, thank you. My name is Eric Alden, I'm current president of Mission Hill Main Street. I have a business here. I, I am not speaking on behalf of Main Street, but I, but I am uh, the president of the board there. Um, I want to just discuss a few items um, about this proposal. And um, a couple of things that that have sort of surprised me through this this process with this team. First thing I noticed today, it appears that the the team has changed, uh, the management team or the or the, um, the the team putting this whole process again. Not not the owners, but the team itself. This group 
um, has used words today like uh, standards, our neighborhood, our community. It's it's a it's a great opportunity for this commission. And a lot of times you don't you don't know the operators are coming in, but in this case, we have a twenty year track record to look back at on this group, and it's not a good track record. This ownership group has no standards. They have no community involvement. This is not their community. They do not grow up here. They don't live here. They operated a, a poorly run business in this neighborhood and took from this neighborhood. And they've shown for 20 years that they have no regard for this neighborhood or its neighbors or even their own customers for, for that matter. This property at 1576 under the same ownership group uh, has been a blight in the business district. It is the highest ticketed property in our business district. I have no confidence that this group would run a business any differently than they did in the business that they own. They, they could have shown that for the past 20 years. The alley, uh, just on a quick division, the alley between the building, I believe cannot be closed off. That serves as a second means of egress for the property located next to it, 1578. The applicant tried to lead you to believe that they own the property next door. They own one of four condos there, maybe one of five condos. So that alley is a second means of egress that cannot be blocked off uh, as part of their plan for, for delivery. Um, so I, I'd really like this, this commission to, to think about this team and their track record of not being good neighbors. And, and that's about all I have to say. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Okay, next is Astiva Asana. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. That's correct. Uh, that would be me, Steve Osana. Um, so yeah, I've just been a student at Northeastern, but I've been living there for a while now. Um, you know, I've grown up with a lot of people around the area who've been living in Mission Hill. And then I got to know some people who are also joining from an international perspective, as was brought up earlier in the meeting. And I'd like to vouch for the fact that there are no other recreational cannabis facilities around the area. And as Aditya has mentioned over and over, I think that Mission Hill is a very busy area with a lot of uh, traffic through the Ruggles bus station area. So to address the parking concerns and all that, I think um, the bus station is a great way where commuters have been coming in from all over Boston and it's right next to the Mission Hill area. And I think that they would not need parking at all as they're using public transit. And being as Mayor Wu's initiatives have been shifting towards using public transit and um, allowing for a more walkable city, I think this is the more ideal way to go and utilize the meters that are already there. Um, but yet again, as a resident, I think that having one closer to the area um, servicing the local neighborhood would be more beneficial to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up is Rakesh Sony. Okay, moving on to Alec Prefontaine. Okay, um, Shakim Ned. Right. Um, Nishi Sahaini. Okay. Uh, Ajit Bharti. Yes, please. Um, 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 my name is Ajit Bharti, and uh, I'm a cancer researcher. I lived in the neighborhood for 15 years. I lived at 1575 Tremont Street for 15 years. I know the neighborhood very well. 
And I believe that uh, this uh, Sony dot dispensary will be very important and uh, important part of that community life. Um, this, I understand this is a recreational marijuana, uh, uh, recreational cannabis facility, but there are other ways the community will benefit from uh, this distribution center or this dispensary is uh, the cannabis is now being used as medicine in many situations, particularly in, in pain medication and um, uh, the cancer patients also get uh, medical marijuana um, during during the course of therapy. So I, I believe the community will be benefited not only for the recreational marijuana or recreational cannabis facility, but uh, that that will help uh, the community in a much better way in uh, getting some kind of medicinal benefits from this this dis dispensary or this uh, this distribution center for uh, cannabis. Uh, I I know the uh, and the the family, the Sony family, and they are excellent business people, and uh, they have served that community very well. I was one of their customers. Uh, so I will I will strongly support uh, this uh, facility in Tremont Street one one and Mission Hill area, and this will be a very good addition in the in the business um, around Mission Hill, and uh, I would like to uh, provide an additional kind of uh, information that more and more people have started using alternative medicines these days. And this will help those people to decide what will help them in overcoming some of their elements like pain. Arthritis is a major problem, health problem in this country. And uh, uh, this will be helpful for the community in general and particularly some patient population in particular. Uh, thanks for your time. And uh, um, thanks for the, giving me the time for, the, for speaking up. All right, thank you. Um, next up is Dave Greenup. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yep. Great, okay. I'm a longtime resident of Mission Hill, about 35 years. Um, I, I wanna ask a question of Aditi. Aditi, you've been made aware of the violations on the properties that you own on Mission Hill. Do you intend to pay them? Should I answer this question? I asked the oh, um, So we're not going to let the members of the public directly ask questions to the applicant, but should the applicant like to answer this on the record, feel free to. Um, I'm happy to add. Um, thank you for your concern, Dave. I have been to community meetings uh, along with Aditya and with repeated request, no one had reached out to Rakesh Soni, who manages this property. And I believe emails are um, being sent all around. Regardless, I would like to add, we have hired a new trash uh, picking um, company or guy who has been working in Mission Hill for last 19 years. For last 30 days, there is no new ticket given. And as Aditya said, this project itself, it involves at least 400K for the renovation of the property and up to 1 million in opening this business. We will not be granted any license to operate this business if we do not meet CCC guidelines. So I would request all these, you know, um, community organization representative here, which we have done during the meetings also. We want to work with you, but you have to support us. Reaching out to just officials and not keeping Rakesh Sony in loop is not helping anyone. Um, I made my point, but we are here to work with you. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, I'm not going to ask you any more questions. I didn't know I could uh, ask or couldn't, shouldn't. That's generally questions. a public meeting. This is a regulatory hearing. Okay, well, great. Uh, I just stated my case, and I'd like the commissioners to be aware of that, that Mission Hill residents do not approve of this family and the properties that they own on Mission Hill. Thank you. Okay, next up is Atul Takar. All right, next up is Jasvinder Singh.
All right, uh, Swaroop Pawar. Hey, good, evening. good afternoon, everyone. My name is Swaroop Pawar. I am a neurologist by profession. I know the Sony family for about 20 years now. I lived in Mission Hill between 2003-2006, and I now own Five Station Street, which is a property in Mission Hill. Um, I like to give some perspective about the Sony family. Uh, I came here as a foreign international student, and along with me, there were about 15, 20 people. And this happens perpetually every year since I've known. I, I come to Boston every year. The family is very, very involved in the students, especially the international community that comes to Mission Hill. Uh, not only are they morally available, but I have had extensive resourceful interactions with people they know, as well as community engagement. So for somebody who comes from an international stature to be associated with such a family, really gives you that foundation that you don't have when you come in. So I'm very grateful and so are a lot of colleagues of mine. They've stood by us and uh, I'm now a practicing neurologist at uh, Duke University Hospital and it wouldn't have been possible without that help. So. I know Mr. Sony for the last 20 years. I've known and seen Aditya grow up. And I think he's fully capable of running such a regulated business and of the stature. So I fully endorse my support for this. All right. Thank you. Um, next is Shalandra Kumar. Hi, this is Shalandra Kumar. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Shalandra Kumar. I said I, I live in that uh, Mission Hill area just across the street at 1575 Tremont Street for around 10 years. And I know uh, Sony family, Aditya, um, from last uh, almost 20 years or so now. They are very responsible people and uh, they love Mission Hill area and they have done a lot for the Mission Hill area in the past. They were, I believe, very well known uh, business people in the area. And I fully support their effort. And I know there is no cannabis uh, dispensary around. Um, and they will do a fantastic job, I, as far as I know. And I fully support their efforts and uh, and their efforts to open up uh, Sony.com uh, dispensary. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, next is Rakesh Dada. Hello, hi, my name is Akesh uh, Dada, and I've also known uh, Sony family for 20 plus years. Um, I'm a scientist by profession and I've worked at uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute for 12 plus years, and I'm quite uh, uh, familiar with uh, the Mission Hill area. Um, uh, Sony family in general has been in you're very actively involved in like several uh, your nonprofit organizations, and uh, they have been involved in like several community uh, services. Uh, uh, your project, the the family as such, is very well respected, uh, and I believe uh, I've seen uh, you know Aditya uh, grown up as a uh, very smart entrepreneur, and I believe. Aditya and the group can effectively manage uh, uh, this kind of a regulatory, uh, your regulated uh, your business. I fully uh, support the opening, opening of uh, Sony Dot uh, project uh, uh, under their name. All right, thank you. Um, next is Abdul Noor. Excuse me, if oh. you're going to testify, could you just please tell us where you live as you introduce yourself? Thank you. Sorry, Luke. It's okay. Um, Abdul uh, Noor. Yes. Uh, my name is Abdul Noor. Uh, I live in Mission Hill, and I knew uh, uh, 1576 Tremont Street business. I, for nine years or 10 years, the service we get is excellent. Uh, they open to everybody. As a senior, a retired senior with medical issues, I cannot travel any distance in a public or driving. It's very convenient that location. It's safe for us. 
and I will appreciate if we get a dispensary there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, next is Anash Zavari. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, my name is uh, Anosha Zaveri. I am one of the owners of 70 Hillside um, on, on 70 Hillside Street in Mission Hill. And I am in favor of the cannabis dispensary. Um, as you all know, it is a regulated business. Um, there are many other towns that have a cannabis dispensary. For example, many strict towns like the town of Arlington that has a cannabis dispensary. Um, I own a house in the town of Arlington as well, and I've never heard of any complaints for coming from that dispensary. So why not in the city of Roxbury? Uh, I also believe that it's a great source of revenue as well as uh, it, it'll create a lot more jobs in that in the city. Um, and last but not least, uh, it gives a young entrepreneur the opportunity to start a new business and make his mark. So I'd like to conclude by saying that I am in favor of this business and I don't think it'll be a hindrance in the city of Roxbury. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Mukesh Sagal. Uh, hi, everyone. You can hear me? Yes, yes we can. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yep. Yes, uh, my name is Mukesh Segal. I live in town of Arlington, but I own a part of the property in 70 Hill in Mission Hill. And uh, I know this Sony family for past 20 to 23 years approximately, and uh, get a great relationship with them. And they had done a very good community job, I know, past few years. And uh, as the owner, I am very familiar with the neighborhood and uh, have spent a lot of time in Mission Hill property. And uh, I'm in agreement to have Sony Cannabis Dispensary open as it is in a, would be great addition to the neighborhood. It will support local businesses as well as provide job. Well, everybody knows that. And uh, I also like that Sony Cannabis will also help the community with local and uh, local, whatever you say is a community local donations, give back to the community, as well as I know in past, they had helped a lot of universities in dinners and lunches uh, programs, which one I myself had delivered some of the stuff with them a long time ago. And uh, I hope that the committee will approve this request to move forward with the dispensary in the Mission Hill neighborhood, and uh, it will help the community as well. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, next is Vedershi Zavari. Everyone, can you all hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. I would like to express my full support for Sony Dot. Um, I am a landlord over at Hillside Street, and I've known Aditya Sony and the Sony family for twenty plus years. I actually grew up with Aditya. I strongly believe that giving a new business owner a chance to demonstrate their abilities is very, very strong. Starting a cannabis business is undoubtedly is a very, very challenging task. Um, it has lots of benefits such as increased tax revenues for local and state levels. It focuses more on health and wellness like we've heard from previous speakers. Um, a lot of it has medical benefits um, it alleviates pain, anxiety, stress um, for a lot of its users. Um, it also creates job opportunities, which we all know is very, very important. Um, there's also a lot of educational benefits, which I don't think we kind of touched on, but it does help consumers um, with safe usage of this product. Um, and it also helps regulate um, illegal sales of the product as well. So um, I strongly believe in this um, and I really hope that the community and this and um, everyone agrees to giving us the opportunity to give them the opportunity to do this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next is Deepesh Dabadul. Okay, um, next is Rajendra 
Sunawar. Okay. Uh, is there Harjinder Core? Okay. Next is Amit Gupta. Okay. Uh, Parul Mathur. Okay, uh, Anish Ramdev. Um, hi. Uh, uh, sorry, this, this is fine. I was on mute. Okay, uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Parul Mathur here. Uh, I'm a student at Northeastern University and I shop at Mission Hill. Um, I have met Aditya and uh, I am very confident that he'll be able to pull off this project considering all the regulatory requirements and uh, he'll be successful, I'm sure. And, you know, I totally uh, support this project uh, of Sony Dot Admission Hill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and that was, uh, next is uh, Anish Remdev. Hi, my name is Anish Randev. I have been um, working with the Sony family for about, uh, again, you know, uh, more than more than two decades. I am a part of Sony's uh, real estate uh, agent. I live in Jamaica Plain. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I live in Jamaica Plain. I have uh, worked in the back bay, South End, and now I work in the uh, Alston area. And I rent all of uh, Mr. Sony's uh, apartments, and I've been very close to the family, and I've known them for a long time. And uh, uh, whatever comes out at the end of the the meeting, uh, whether the commission approves it or not, but my uh, thing that I would like to add is that, uh, as far as the family is concerned. Um, I'm not aware of the violations or anything, but as far as the family, I can speak uh, for them. Uh, being uh, an owner of a few buildings in and around uh, Mission Hill, uh, Mr. Sony and his family has actually helped a lot of uh, kids from uh, India, uh, for that matter, uh, and and has uh, helped them in finding places and helping them um, stay at uh, the places even without uh, charging them at times. So you know, as far as the family is concerned, I think they they are going to be a good plus uh, for the neighborhood. Thank you for your time, and thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Eric Alden. Uh, I spoke earlier. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, Mary Ann Nelson. Hi. Um, Mary Ann Nelson, long term resident of Mission Hill. I own a house on Gore Street. Um, I'm against this development. Uh, it's still not clear to me. This is my third meeting. I don't know if you can hear me. Somebody else is talking. This is my third meeting, and every time I go to a meeting, the ownership seems to have changed. Um, so, as I said, it's, I haven't the faintest idea if the people who presented themselves as the owners really are the owners still, or some other group is, or some others. I'm found, I'm surprised to hear that the applicant majored in criminal justice because he was totally unaware of the impact of the unequal law enforcement of drug laws on the Mission Hill community when I talked to him in April. Maybe he knows more now, but I'm quite surprised. He had no plan really to address how his facility was going to address the terrible impact of drug law enforcement on the Mission Hill community. And it appears that he has no plan still. Um, I was really surprised after he came to a community meeting and everyone complained about the garbage at his at this location that I walked by the end of June and saw tickets on the building for garbage. Even if he does not own the building, if he wanted to 
put in a highly regulated business, I would have been there every day making sure I didn't get any more tickets. If he can't help us with the rat and rodent problem we're currently experiencing in Boston, I don't think he's capable of handling a cannabis business, which is even more highly regulated than trash. So um, uh, I think that their commitment to, hey, I haven't, I missed a part of the, how much they're planning to give for community benefits, but the last amount I heard was tiny and for a short period of time, he needs to make a permanent commitment for as long as this business is operating in Mission Hill to pay for the Mission Hill community. This impact of the Okay, that was your two minutes. Um, next we have Adam Sarbo. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, we, we've heard a lot since I get to go towards the end on the personal references and characters of the establishment team. And I think that's wonderful stuff. The business character and reference is really what we should be looking at. And the community has spoken on that in opposition of their follow-up and their um, just sense of care in a business sense. They might be wonderful people in a profession, in a personal sense, which we have heard, and I, I applaud them for all of that stuff. Um, but th this th whole process has been, um, you know, the goalposts have continually been moved. Eric pointed it out as well. At, at one point, the entire team here has changed since they've gone through the community process. They had two other consultants that were supposed to actually be part of the team and working in the establishment with long record to try to sway some of this, this concern, um, come to find out with no notice or, or community reaching, right? they didn't reach out, that it's an entire new team that presented to you here today, minus the, uh, the Sonys. Um, you know, we, we hear about all of this, and I think, and, and I think the Sonys are very um, charismatic, and I think they're very articulate people when they're speaking and their presentation comes through here, but a lot of it is just words without details and without any written commitment or written follow-up with any of the community groups or their neighbors in terms of what's happening. We haven't gotten any written um, Mission Hill Neighborhood Housing Services letter of opposition to you stated that there's no written enforcement of any local um, employment. They've since talked about the written community benefit. They don't have their plan of who, it, it, how are you coming to this board and not have a fixed plan Hi. of a minimum number of people that you're, that you're going to employ. Sorry. Everything's going to be so I, I just point that out, that, that this is way too premature, and they are speaking just to pass muster and get through this board as fast as they can with no substance details or written commitments to the long term of the community. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Alp Kantar. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alp. Can everyone hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. So uh, I'm the director at 1578 Tremont Street and um, own three units there and also manage the condo station. The alleyway is basically a uh, second egress and it's not just, you know, they, their plan says that, you know, they own that, but it's, it's shared. And condo station, 1570 Tremont, which is above Subway, we're opposed to that. Um, Adam, uh, I agree with Adam. Um, as far as the business character, uh, uh, this person is definitely, I'm, I'm not supporting. We actually had to sue him. He hasn't paid condo fees for the last four years. And I had to get an attorney to sue, in, you know, on behalf of the condo station to get $17,000 back for the last four years. Um, so it's very hard to deal with. Um, definitely opposing it. I don't want my tenants to block the uh, second egress. Um, that's all I need to say. Also, I manage and own the building on the left side, 1574 and 72, manage that property, two buildings on the left side, and we're opposing on that as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Tony Kompst. OK, 
Okay. Um, I see that Nishi has her hand raised. I'll ask her you to unmute. No, you just did. You just call on Tony. Oh, Tony. Tony sorry. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Tony Comst. I grew up in Mission Hill. I live in Mission Hill. I want to thank Commissioner Holmes and Chairwoman Joyce for doing their homework. I appreciate that, and the rest of you commissioners also. Um, I was a board member on Mission Hill Main Streets for 15 years. I just resigned. I'm currently a board member on Community Alliance of Mission Hill. And as you know, we oppose this tremendously. We've tried for 15 years and Main Streets is still trying uh, to uh, better that uh, business, which is now closed. As I said, it was a blight on our community. They refused all of Main Street's help. Um, and I agree that Eric Alden said, so I don't want to repeat everything Eric Alden said. Um, this family has not been honest with you. There is no good parking in Mission Hill at all, never mind around this proposed business. Across the street, a half a block down, there's a couple of residential parking spaces. I can't even find residential parking spaces to, to, to put my car in when I want to visit a local business over there. So there's no place this truck that's delivering cannabis is going to be able to park. Secondly, uh, we used to deliver flowers out front on behalf of Main Streets to all our businesses. We even put some in front of this, uh, that when it was a grocery store, whatever they wanted to call it. They wouldn't even water the flowers. The, the business was a blight in the community. I don't think it's gonna be any different just because the son has taken over because the father and mother is still involved. Um, the other issue is that uh, they still have unpaid fines. The condo owner just mentioned, he doesn't even pay the condo fees. Both the butters adjacent on both the left and the right side don't even support this. Uh, the other issue is um, as, as far as cleaning up the property, we used to have to ask him to sweep up in front of his business like the rest of the business owners do in Mission Hill. He, they wouldn't even do that. Um, as you can see, there are still violations posted as of this week outside the building. There's still violations posted outside the building. Um, the other issue is um, uh, not only the parking, but they never even initially went to the, the mission school down on St. Alfonso Street, a half a block down, un until we confronted them uh, about not talking to the Mission Hill School. There's a daycare center directly across the street in the, in the ground level of the apartment building across the street. And if I were the commissioner and... Sorry, that was your two minutes. Um, I see Nishi has her hand raised. Um, if you'd like to provide your testimony, I'll ask you to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, respective chairperson, my name is Nishi. I live 95 Cent Alfonso Street. I have known Sony family and CEO of this project Aditya for many years and fully support this project since this family is very helpful to the people who are in need. So I am fully supporting it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And, um, oh, I see uh, Lucky with his hand raised, so I will ask to unmute. Hi, this is Lucky from 739 Parker Street. Um, I know Sony since a uh, few years and we have been shopping at the place. It's always helpful. And the new generation is the one of the topic that I would like to mention, like people are talking about Rakesh Sony, but this is his son who is going to taking over and the laws of protecting selling the cabinets is something they have to do it. That are a lot of things they are not able to even go through any camera system. Each person coming inside has to scan there. Otherwise, they're not allowed into there. There are two doors. If you have gone in one of the, any one of the cannabis store, you would know, like, these are the regulations. Without this, um, the government is not going to even allow them to open the store. Even the camera system has to be fully recorded through the um, certified company. And there is no way anybody can go and do anything wrong in this location, which uh, is an issue about not handling properly, which is going to be the professional way. The managers are going to be there. And uh, 
that's fully restricted. Even the one ounce of the product has to be notified who they sold it to, and that has to be recorded and given to the government. So any time of the day, if something happens, they have full record. It's nothing like a convenience store um, selling like or beer wine. It's more like 10 times regulated than any store else. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, seeing no more requests. Oh, um, Emil, you have two minutes. Jamil, I sent you a request to unmute if you would like to give your testimony. I did unmute. Okay, we can hear you. We can hear you, Jamil, if you want to give your testimony. Okay, moving on, uh, we have Harjinder Kaur. Hi, hi everyone, this is Harjinder Kaur and we own a property in Mission Hill and we know Sony family very well. They are very helpful and I fully support Sony Dot Project to have the dispensary in the Mission Hill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Harry Patel. Hi, my name is Harry Patel. I'm a local business owner at 82 Hillside Street. I'm in a full support for Sony Dot. Okay, thank you. And Martin Brineburn. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Martin Brineburn. I live at Edigany Street in Mission Hill, and I'm the current president of the Community Alliance of Mission Hill. Our members overwhelmingly voted to oppose this proposal. There were three main reasons we heard, which are as follows. One, the business location and the, the applicant's family's prior business there have a history of unsatisfactory cleanliness and of, of, of upkeep citations, which were not paid. Second, the applicant's father, who will continue to own the business site, also has multiple uh, rental properties in our neighborhood. Again, from the city, uh, we have heard that many uh, fines have accumulated and there were uh, many, there was poor upkeep of these properties. And lastly, we are very concerned about the proximity to the highly appreciated Mission Grammar School, which is registered, which has registered its opposition. Even if the proximity of this school and of a daycare slash playground across the street may just fall outside the criterion of, uh, of posing a violation, we are concerned about uh, negative impacts. And lastly, I may add, uh, I understand like medical marijuana will not be offered at the, at the facility. And I think that was cited as one of the reasons why uh, the, the property was, the proposal was supported by one of the speakers. Uh, I hope I got this right. Thank you. All right, uh, Jamil, uh, if you would like to speak. Yeah, my audio should be working. Can you guys hear me fine? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So a number of the complaints I've been here. Oh, well, let me let me just address. I am a long-term resident of Mission Hill. I just moved out to East Boston, but I did attend the Mission Grammar as well as the Tobin after school program. And I got baptized as our baptized in our Lady of Perpetual Help. So I'm pretty familiar with the area. I heard a lot of complaints about be, it being a blight to the neighborhood and it attracting rodents because of the health con health problems, though I am a little bit confused because it seems that the board members allows the gas station that serves fried chicken to continue operating when I constantly see mice over in that area that obviously draw does draw mice to that neighborhood, that part of the neighborhood. So I don't really see why all the blame is fall, falling on Aditi's shoulders um, only. Um, as for number two of the fact as to why it could be a blight to the neighborhood, there 
is a lot of vacant retail space that has been vacant for over 10 plus years, all owned by one or two landlords that has seemed to completely abandon the property. There's, you know, multiple constructions that supposed to be going, most, a lot of constructions that's supposed to be going on around the neighborhood that hasn't exactly been finished. Um, at least, you know, the Sony family is at least trying to keep the neighborhood looking alive by establishing another business in that spot instead of just letting it go completely in disrepair. Um, you guys talk a lot about employment status. Um, it is a rec it is a dispatch. Okay, that was your two minutes. And seeing no more requests to speak, the board will take this matter under advisement. Uh, those were all the transactional matters before the board today. The board's voting meeting will take place Wednesday, August 21st at 1 p.m. Again, the record will be kept open until next Tuesday, August 20th at 5 p.m. And th that concludes this hearing and everyone have a good afternoon.